Uh, so just like we started off last season of the podcast, this is our behind the scenes conversation about the movies that we're picking for this season. Um, so this isn't a polished episode that you're going to be listening to in your feed. This is literally just us brainstorming and the nonsense that we discuss in between episodes and before and after the the shows that we record and stuff. It, it gets a little wacky. It, it involves us talking about some food, some weather. Lots of dogs going, row, 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 row. <laughs> <laughs> Only one dog. <laughs> Just the same dog. <laughs> not, not multiple dogs. <laughs> Our dog isn't even alive. I don't know where she is. So, <laughs> <laughs> You know, that's funny because Brooklyn's like laying in the hallway, like passed out. <laughs> Toby's just staring at me. <laughs> <laughs> this is also our first video recording being back in Washington, right? Like we finished no. off last season. No, we finished off here. Yeah, we finished off here, but through and through, we're going to be local. Oh, yeah, the whole time. Yeah. And we might even be able to pull off some local, like all three of us in the same room recording. So if all the vac stuff goes, if, if everyone go, gets their goes stuff according done. to plan. <laughs> we did choose a theme and... Th- to be honest with you, every time we choose a theme, I'm always like, this is going to be a forever conversation. And each time I feel like, yeah, that sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> One of us has an idea and we're all like, yeah, that's good. Let's do that. <laughs> yep. A whole season just about tremors. <laughs> hey, there's enough movies. I know. <laughs> there's enough tremors <laughs> that we could do that. <laughs> uh, so we did choose a theme and it's it's kind of funny because it's, the theme has caused some discussion about what what it is. Some heated because, discussion. <laughs> yes, because the theme that we've chosen is unlikely duos, which for our time range, 1975 to 1995, I mean, let's be real. Every movie was trying to figure out a way to be lethal weapon, right? Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Everything was like a buddy cop movie or a buddy crooks or odd couple type movie. For example, we just watched one. We watched one on Saturday <laughs> called Enemy Mine, which has got Dennis Quaid as Earthman and Lou Gossett Jr. as like this amphibious alien. He was a drac. Yes. Oh. Get it straight. He's from planet Dracon. He's a drac. <laughs> 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 but he did look like a fish man, though. That, that is true. He had gills and nice. I don't know. <laughs> That's I, I've been all in the 90s lately. Other than Tremors, I, I've watched Cliffhanger, which has Stallone and John Lithgow. In that Enemy Mind movie, it is phrased as sci-fi action earth versus alien they're stranded on a alien I, like yeah, a deserted planet deserted basically. planet and they must fight to survive and what it really is, is that these two become the best of friends and one of them has <laughs> to raise the other one's child we're still not <laughs> sure we're really not sure how the alien got pregnant though the the <laughs> alien little got the junior got what he ended up being pregnant in it and he's like i'm gonna have a you're gonna have to raise my my little one and then bring him to the council and like attest to him like uh, like give give like <laughs> i don't know so wait did <laughs> like, he like die for having the child yeah he died and, before like, having that... the, yeah he died like before spoiler Does, he dies so before he, the baby's born and so then so he has to pull he, him out he's to save a, the kid <laughs> okay but he's an alien so does the kid eat him like is that no like... he's like a little <laughs> He's a little shriveled up baby alien, and so then he raises him to be like to like about ten or eleven, and then then so, the drama happens. Then that's where the drama takes place. So <laughs> you're waiting for the whole movie for there to be something, some kind of drama, other than like uh-huh. big, big giant meteors falling on their heads. But <laughs> <laughs> uh, let me guess, the kids picked on him because he's an alien. <laughs> no, they still live on. This, they're, 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 listen, I'm gonna transfer. <laughs> yeah, no. I'm gonna transfer to your Plex server. It is by no way a sci-fi or a action movie. It is a 100% a stepdad raising his raising a son movie. But and it's like all sad and dramatic and oh, it's like you a, know, it really is a bromance. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, and, and people are going to crush me for this, but I kind of feel that way about the movie The Arrival. It is a deep movie, but like it's supposed to be a sci-fi and I mean there are aliens. But it's like drama set in a sci-fi environment. But it's not sci-fi. Nothing about the movie <laughs> is about the aliens. Well, chances are we're probably not going to see it because we're still stuck. We're still watching Enemy Mine. Right. And <laughs> well, okay, listen, I want to talk a little bit about the break, okay? <laughs> because we stopped putting out episodes. What was it like October? Yeah, I think so. November or maybe like somewhere. I think it was October. We took November, it December. Was, yeah. 
January, February, we're, we're supposed to come back in March. <laughs> well, you know. You know <laughs> now it's almost May. Like, here, here we are. In that time, we have come to the conclusion that the best action movies that are being made right now are Hindi action movies in India. <laughs> oh my gosh. It's, it's actually so, wonderful. It's not, not a joke. It's not, but like, it's not, we're not even being sarcastic. It's actually wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> See, like, and, and I can't even hate on you guys because uh, I'm, I'm always so mad when I'm looking through Netflix and all of the best sci fi's are like, are foreign films. Mm -hmm. Like America sucks at sci-fi compared to everybody else. You should see the stuff that they're doing in like Japan. So we've completely fallen in love with Hindi action movies. In there's a couple of actors in particular that, yeah. that that we're really paying attention to. Um, in particular, one of their hands. So if you know what, if you watch Hindi, if you watch Hindi action movies, you know who we're talking about. The guy with the hand. I mean, he's a gorgeous man, too, for the record. <laughs> <laughs> we watched so many of them, like, all blending together, too. But the guy that we're talking about, which I'm calling a total blank I on his name. his name at all. He's a great dancer, too. Yeah, he's all around. Oh, yeah. Which is what is a huge letdown. I, I mean, I want you to imagine the late Terminator Genesis. <laughs> and in the middle of it, they dance and sing. And Arnie needs to be a really good dancer, too. Not yeah. just oh, action oh. actor, but good dancer, too. No, it would legitimately be like if you were... We talked about this earlier. It would legitimately be if you were watching, like, Captain America. And in the middle of it, they were like, hey, you know what? And we're going to have this big dance scene. And Chris Evans has to learn... He has to know how to do choreographing dance and sing and costumes yeah. and everything. And then they go back to the movie. It's like, okay. <laughs> so... <laughs> I think he could pull that off, by the way. Oh, yeah, I think him. he could, too. He seems like that type. Like, I, I bet you he's done choreographed dance before. Chris, we're here for it. Call us. Yes. Okay. Right, listen. <laughs> I would like to see the video of that. <laughs> I wish we could do it for the for this podcast. They're way too long. Every yeah, movie's no, three hours long. long. There's And... There's a lot of cultural stuff that we don't get. So It'd be really hard. Like, it. <laughs> yeah, like, you don't. We, we shouldn't talk publicly about cultural things that we don't know no <laughs> yeah we're just here for the fun yeah exactly just here uh, for the fun uh the other thing that we've been going deep on that we got for getting ready for this season is billy blanks <laughs> <laughs> hey, we watched some burt reynolds too that was an experience he was so sweaty <laughs> <laughs> no, all you could see was how sweaty he was and how his wig was not staying on <laughs> His toupee was not ready. It was not a heat a the heat of him. <laughs> oh, hey guys, guys! They made a new Mythica. At oh least no, one. Mythica! <laughs> there's wow. at least another. There's at least another new one. So yeah, still getting them made. <laughs> so, someone's got money, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> someone's paying to make those. <laughs> <laughs> we're not sure who but <laughs> i want to say this too so gotta... <laughs> so anyways let's start talking about the movies that we've had or that we were discussing on what we could do for the season because there's so many options but i think what we know we do well will involve a couple of the big name movies yeah but it's mm -hmm. got to have some really off the beaten path movies because I think that's that's right in our wheelhouse where it's got to yes. be there's there's some good ones in there, too, that we just stumble on. Mm -hmm. But then I mean, it's, it's yeah. also good to have some fun when there's a bad one in there. Oh, you mean like yeah. Showdown in Little Tokyo? <laughs> <laughs> no, Showdown in Little Tokyo is fantastic. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Deadly Bet. <laughs> Deadly Bet. <laughs> <It's> terrible. <laughs> Deadly Bet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> There's a lot to choose from. Just with like Bruce Willis, you could go Last Boy Scout. You can go a few different areas with him. Hey, speaking of Bruce Willis, just off topic, you've been watching Falcon and the Win and the Winter Soldier, right? I have. I'm a few episodes behind. I've okay. only seen the first like three, I think. Well, I'm gonna say this out loud then, and then you're not gonna be able to unsee it. That Sebastian Stan as the Winter Soldier is doing his best Bruce Willis impersonation. Oh no. Yeah, I think you're going to... Oh, okay. I think I know what you're talking about. <laughs> you know, Better and looking I guess... Version. No, <laughs> I watched a little bit of Kevin Smith stand up the other night, and uh, I guess uh, Bruce isn't quite the uh, nice guy we kind of thought. We, the guy, we thought Buck Buck would be, so... <laughs> no, I mean, no real surprise there. Mm -hmm. Based on how everything has gone in the last 18 months, I'm not surprised by anyone being a jerk. I yeah. am. <laughs> 
<laughs> I can't believe it. That's not true. Melissa's still smarting after finding out that Sylvester Stallone bought a place right next to Mar-a-Lago. I can't. I can't oh, handle it. Oh. Like crushing a dream of my <laughs> my childhood is crushed. <laughs> He can't be like that. He's Rocky. Yeah. <laughs> it's all right. He's not going to be in Creed 3, so I'm, all, I'm okay with that then. <laughs> <laughs> just, <kidding. laughs> just Michael B. Jordan. I'm all right. <laughs> I did say there's a little bit of a discussion about what an <laughs> unlikely duo is. Because I think I don't think that includes movies where like one person is escorting the other. So like in the 80s, there's a ton of movies where some hooker <laughs> accidentally sees <laughs> okay, like, a murder. Okay. <laughs> And then the main action hero has to like take, she's a witness and has to protect her. And then she's, they're a duo, but not really. It's like, okay, a, but hooker, what if she's just a regular girl on a date with an ass? <laughs> I didn't say that I had a problem with sex workers. I know, but what I'm saying is you're categorizing them all as hookers. What if she's just a regular girl? <laughs> she wouldn't date with a, with a stupid man. That happens a lot. <laughs> but the story of the last, the last Boy Scout is like the exact kind of story that I'm talking about, which oh, is yeah, like, she's an actual hooker. She's, an, like, no, she's, a hooker. She, she's a stripper. Stripper. Right. Yeah. Okay. So hooker, stripper. Yeah, but the, but the odd couple would be Keenan, not Keenan, uh, Damon. Damon Wayans mm-hmm. and Bruce Willis. Yeah. So, and he would be the ex quarterback and the PI. So, anyways, so. I don't think like escort movies. I think what you're saying is you, in order for it to be an unlikely duo, they have to be like involved in whatever. It doesn't matter. I mean, it doesn't have to be police. We, we've already established that. They don't have to be like cops. Like, but it doesn't have to be buddy cop, which was where we started with this, but we kind of branched mm-hmm. out. Um, because. But it has to be like they're both like running from something or investigating something. And they're both like involved in like helping each other, saving each other, which is where we, we, me and Dominic had a, a very uh, deep discussion about one of the movies on this list <laughs> and whether, <laughs> and whether it, it deserves to be on the list because it, it's a man and a woman and we went back and forth. And then I went and looked it up and it, it's, um, Action Jackson. And I was like, no, because she helps him. She saves him and she, and she helps him in the investigation, too. So, mm-hmm. like, they are a duo. She, he's not just saving her. She's not just, like, some damsel in distress. And she saves him and she has information. So it's like what both they're both involved in it. The exact term that I was thinking of that I wanted to avoid was the damsel in distress. Yeah. Like, yeah. someone saw okay. something. I need to protect you throughout the entire movie, right? So what you're saying is that Charles Bronson movie we watched last weekend. <laughs> yes. Where you, where you spend the entire thing just saying homophobic slurs at her <laughs> while he's rescuing her. <laughs> uh, what was that? It's um, it, Murphy's law. law. Murphy's Law, yeah. yeah. That was all right. Other than all that. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought that's why Axon Jackson kind of fit was because Vanity wasn't, he said, wasn't a damn stress that she was badass in that movie. So. Yeah, she's an active, yeah, it, she's an active participant in the movie in in the, like, the things they're trying to solve. And if you look at the cover of the movie, they're like back to back like they're partners, not like, you mm-hmm. know, like, yeah. I think Vanity will be the only person that's bridged every Miami Vice on all every season with the movies and she's been in, if the, she's in this one yeah yeah no yeah. she was yeah because she was in the movies we yeah yep she's in yeah she's in you should watch it for sure and and also in the last dragon yeah so, yeah she oh my gosh okay yeah Man, i mean we have to do it then no. <laughs> <laughs> see you were trying to argue <laughs> well i mean it's not like any of us are vain <laughs> Nah, you know. <laughs> I think what spawned the idea for the unlikely Dillos, and it's for sure in this season, is Tango and Cash. That's exactly yeah. what I said. Remember, I'm like, like Tango and Cash. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, we are doing Tango and Cash. We basically built an entire season of the podcast care. around <laughs> doing Tango and Cash. Yeah, I know. I just said Sylvester mm. Stallone turns out to be not who I thought he was, but I could still pretend so- <laughs> Tango and Cash. <laughs> You know who so, he's still who I thought he was? Kurt Russell. He's still a solid man. He's good. Yeah. Well, I was gonna say, have they done a movie since Tango and Cash together? No, I don't think so. No, I don't think so. No, nothing I can think of. No, he refused. So all I know is that the rumor is that they asked Kurt Russell to be in like The Expendables, and he said no. Ah, uh, saying a lot. He said nope. No thanks. <laughs> well, not like uh, JCVD. He was like, I'm ready. <laughs> I've been, I've been waiting for this opportunity. Why didn't you have me in the first one? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it is the man that calls up French mus- music artists and it's like, hey, I really love your music. I want to be in your music video. They're like, what would you do? And he's like, I'd like to dance. I, I, I like the song a lot. I dance to it a lot. They're like, yes, please. <laughs> Let's do this. <laughs> 
speaking of JCVD, the idea for him in this season, because, you know, we got to work him in whenever uh, we yeah. can. Is, and so if we're going to do a lot, a lot, unlike you do So the superstars, Kurt Russell, <laughs> Sylvester Stallone. That's one yeah. movie. Then we're going to have JCVD and his ultimate duo, JCVD. <laughs> <laughs> hey, excuse me. I don't think anybody else could play twins that good, okay? <laughs> I don't know. I, I'm just going to throw it out there. I thought double team with Rod better. No. But... <laughs> I'm like, yo, how could he be better than himself? Like, d- just the pure concept that it's him. Twice. Like, <laughs> and he does Rodney. it again in another movie that yeah, we but, watched recently. Yes, but then we'll be giving... Okay, but listen to me. Is, then we'll be giving Dennis Rodman some kind of light. And I am shining a light on Dennis Rodman. <laughs> <laughs> but this is, when, this is when Dennis Rodman was marrying Madonna and wearing a wedding dress. This is when Dennis Rodman... You mean Carmen Electra. Uh, uh, oh, sorry, Carmen Electra. I was right. like, not Madonna. This, this, this isn't the Rodman that gets drunk with North Korean dictators. <laughs> yeah, but that's who he is now, so... <laughs> So we got two for sure. Tango and Cash, the double impact. I'm all I think we're also all on board with Alien Nation. Because yes. what other yes. unlikely duo I mean, do you have other than human cop and alien cop? Yes, exactly. <laughs> well, unless he turns out to be an alien stepfather. <laughs> so I mean we could have done that one. It would have been it's not right though, because it's kind of boring. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> See, I bought Alien Nation on eBay and it says DVD two set and it came with enemy mine i yeah. didn't even know what it was it's just i was like whatever i'm getting alien nation and in there was enemy mine and we were like we're gonna watch it we gotta watch it <laughs> <laughs> is it linked somehow to alien nation or is that like hey just stick this in there with that dvd i think it was like no one wanted to buy it <laughs> we're like listen we got all these discs lying two around alien movies yeah it's two, two alien. alien movies two for one like it's two it's, alien human movies yeah that's what i'm saying same like, thing, like mm-hmm. just on a different planet okay. hey i know about 15 people that at, when they're walking to walmart they would have stopped and picked it up so I, we know them all and they're all in our families <laughs> <laughs> Tell me both our dads wouldn't have picked it up. <laughs> I maybe dig around those $5 bins every once in a while, every time I'm there. Yeah. Um, I came home with a revved up set and the Gerald Butler collection. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Can you name five Gerald Butler movies? No. <laughs> oh, isn't it just... Exactly. Uh... <laughs> Isn't it just like the... All oh, the London is falling? Yeah. Like, or the White House. Like it's like only one of actor. them. <laughs> only one of them. So no, it's the, the other newest <laughs> one, Angel Has Fallen. Yeah. And then Hunter Killer, Law Abiding Citizen, something called The Vanishing. And get this, of all of his movies, apparently Gods of Egypt is up in the top five. <laughs> <laughs> Well, if I knew what that was, I would have an opinion. <laughs> this this mm. reminds me, in the break, you know what we did other than the Hindi movies? We watched a ton, I mean a ton, of Scott Adkins movies. Oh, yeah, we did. And he is outside of our range here, 75 to 95. Yeah, but, but we should but do like a spotlight or something. <laughs> you know, if you're listening to this podcast, you watch Scott Adkins movies. So, like, let me give Scott Adkins a plug. Not only does he, like, in action movies, and he's fantastic, he's Brit. Obviously, I didn't know he was British either <laughs> until I started following him on, on uh, uh. YouTube. He has his own, on yeah, on YouTube, he has his own YouTube channel, and he does, like, I forgot what it's called. It's like behind the action. He does interviews with all these people, like who he's been in movies with and who he hasn't been in movies with. So, for example, he got like big name people like he got an interview with Steven Seagal. Oh, wow. That's what it's called. Art of action. Art of the action. That's what it's called. Um. Anyway, so he has like all these crazy interviews with all these people who get them to do the interviews. Not, not, not in the same. Did room, he have to? Did he have to go to Russia? To talk no, no. To they did it like <laughs> they did it like you know, um, Zoom or you know whatever like that way. Oh, but gotcha, yeah. Gotcha. But Steven Seagal was. I I saw like the excerpt from it. It was really funny. <laughs> so he he really thinks very highly of himself. He's talking about like one of the movies he made, and he was like like um trying to pitch it to some movie director guy and the guy was like that's the best story and he said it he was the goal said and he told me that's the best story i've ever heard that's the most amazing story i ever heard in, in all my days of doing this we have to make that movie and so they made the movie <laughs> so for sure like if you're listening to this go watch art of action scott atkins i'm gonna i'm looking at the list right now i'm gonna give you some of the names that are on here dolph lundgren 
Steven Seagal. Uh, where is it? Michael J. White. Yep. Uh, which mm-hmm. we watched a few of those. They've been in movies too. together, a bunch of movies together. Ico Uwais, who's in Triple Threat, yep. The Raid, both the I think both the Raid movies he's in. He also did one with Kurt McKinney, mm-hmm. the guy from No Retreat, No Surrender. Yeah. He gets big names. Like all these people. I mean, these people, I went and looked him up and I'm like, oh my God, this guy, we got to get these movies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely go watch that. I got to add it to my uh, super secret archive <laughs> that I do with the internet. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so but anyways, he's just outside of our timeline. Yeah, so we're not going to do a bunch of Scott Adkins movies. Maybe, you know, do a little expansion. Maybe uh, you should watch it mm. type stuff. <laughs> you know, maybe maybe there'll be some, some Scott Adkins in there. The uh, other movie that I, I have been adamant about that i want to make sure it ends up in this season is canine <laughs> we gotta have a dog okay when the dog is the better partner <laughs> yes we got yeah exactly yeah. It gotta be a dog one it's gotta be with the dog is the is yeah the money and the one. dog doesn't get hurt the dog makes it in the end please yeah yes <laughs> no yes. turner and hooch no no that's, one ever watched Turner mm-hmm. and Hooch. No, don't do it. Did it's you not- know? Okay. All right, all right. So I'm just going to. I probably shouldn't say anything, but they made a second canine. Oh, really? Yeah. With, there's with a, the same people. With the, with the same, with Belushi and the. And Golden, the same dog? Uh, and the German <laughs> Shepherd. Yeah. He's like, it, the dog's like older or something. <laughs> okay. So we I, know I you swear. Out, then. <laughs> I saw it. I, where did I see it? I saw it on, I think, Amazon. Or yeah. It's something. like canine and and a half or something and like they gave it some yeah, stupid like kind of name canine, yeah yeah so yeah they made a second one so i i am not sure if the dog survives that one though so well here's I'm here's a few sure. things i know about the original canine movie one the dog's name is jerry lee i don't know why i remember that but i do <laughs> 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 two the dog does make it all the way through the end and three the dog is the better action actor <laughs> well yeah, <laughs> <that movie>. <laughs> <laughs> now there was some debate because we were like uh jim belushi we should do Red Heat, and I love, I yeah, love, we do all love Red, Red Heat. Heat but... but we're talking, and that is an an unlikely duo. But for me, I think, I mean, I know it's Russian cop, Russian cop, American cop. We're we're working together, and it is really good. But I don't want to do Top Dog because I don't want to do Chuck Norris again. And I Canine is we the better, the dog, like where yeah. the dog <laughs> is the partner. It's tough. It's tough because I I. I'm with you. I wanted to do the Arnie Belushi with Red Heat, but I also want to do a dog part, uh, one, but I didn't want to... Well, I mean, I guess the only other thing we could do is we could do the orangutan, uh, mm. even though I think Every Which Way But Loose is technically 74. No, I don't so. want to do the orangutan one. That orangutan is not... There's no way I'm doing that one. There's no way that orangutan was treated nicely on the set of anything. Yeah. They, oh. There's all kinds of stuff where they, like, drugged him and stuff. To also, if we're going to do a monkey one, we got to do Dunstan Checks In. <laughs> <laughs> like, we have all these great opinions about these animal movies. <laughs> I, you know, and I, I think what's glaring is, is that none of us want to do Top Dog, and it's not because of the dog. <laughs> no, <laughs> the dog is fantastic. Listen, we did Top Dog. It's called Lone Wolf. The, <laughs> the dog didn't make it out though. <laughs> Yeah, I'm sorry. No, I don't want to do another Chuck Norris movie. I don't even. Sorry, I don't want to watch another Chuck Norris movie for like fun or anything. No, I'm good. All right. Well, Red Heat will have to wait. You know, the other Belushi one that we talked about was gang related with Tupac, and that movie's great. It is, but it's kind of a it's a short partnership. <laughs> yeah. Not to give it all away, but it's kind of a short partnership. It's kind of just a one man thing, so I don't know. <laughs> it's good though; it is a great movie. So the the movies that we have so far: Tango and Cash, Double Impact, K Nine, Action Jackson, Alien Nation. The one that me and Melissa threw in there was Tiger Claws. We talked a little bit about that last season. Like we had seen it during the season. Like, yeah. Hey, we're gonna come back to that movie. That's got Bolo Young and Cynthia Rathrock. Yeah, and then this other Brazilian guy who Jal- never remember his name. Jalil, I can't, I can't pronounce it. I'm not going to butcher it right now. <laughs> I know what it is, but I don't want to say it wrong. No, you, you're going to wait till I butcher it in uh, guest stars. <laughs> but uh, yes, and I think it's really important that we we both thought it was important that we do that one because uh, Cynthia Rathrock is like she is in so many movies in the '80s, and she is a powerhouse as far as like a female mm-hmm. fighter. So and and it is an unlikely duo. <laughs> so, so a surprising amount of Tiger Claws movies. Yes, they did. <laughs> <laughs> and all the posters have Bolo Young on it. So if you <laughs> spoiler, Bolo Young never. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 
I'm super excited to revisit that movie to go back to it because it does have like the big reveal. Mm-hmm. And I'm I'm interested now that I know what's going to happen. Yeah, what like, yeah through that lens, be. what what's gonna happen. So I'm I'm excited to see that one again. Now I want to come back to Billy Blanks because Melissa went off on this deep rabbit hole <laughs> of all the like I do. Sometimes. All the Billy Blanks and Roddy Piper movies that there are. I mean <laughs> Did we know we needed more than one? <laughs> <laughs> that, and then at the same time when you discovered that, that there was a Carl Weathers Hulk Hogan movie. Oh my god, I almost like passed out at that one. <laughs> I'm very disappointed that we couldn't find it anywhere so we could watch it right now. I, I mean, like literally, I even told our son about it. So <laughs> he's waiting for it too. <laughs> and then I told him about the Roddy Piper. Billy Blank thing, and he went on to tell me some stuff about Roddy Piper, and I was like, no, don't tell me these things. I don't want to know. I don't want to know that he wasn't nice. No, uh, no, he was nice. I don't want to hear it. <laughs> well, I mean, technically, I think he was supposed to be a villain. Yeah. In the w- yes, oh. and that's exactly what, and it was like where he had done some, like, promotion stuff for the WWE, or whatever F back then, WF, and he was um like, saying some racist stuff, like, while he was promoting oh. it, like about some oh. of the other people he was going to wrestle. And so I was like, no, I don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> I'd expect that out of Hacksaw Jim Duggan. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Not Roddy Piper. He's wearing a kilt. <laughs> like, come on. <laughs> Sorry, Hacksaw. I know. <laughs> <laughs> He's probably a sweet guy. <laughs> We did decide on doing tough and deadly because, and that's this is gonna be like our deadly bet for the season, right? <laughs> hey, don't uh-huh. don't insult Billy Blanks like that. <laughs> well, I mean, does does he actually talk in this one? I I think he does, but hey, just if you guys want to get fit and you want to get healthy again, <laughs> go follow Billy Blanks on YouTube because he's doing workout videos again. Yeah, in his oh. front yard with his family, he's doing. He oh, had- did he make up with his kid? Because his kid has his own system. No, 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 no. This is saw... his newer family. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. It's not I his son anyway. Say, cause his, yeah, because he wouldn't invest in his son. His son had to go on Shark Tank. Well, maybe his son had a bad idea. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs> maybe his son's idea is too close to his yeah, idea. Maybe. No. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, he has a but yeah, he has a huge channel. And he puts out new like workout videos. Yeah, like he's Gall- in those Gallagher and Gallagher's brother. You know? like... <laughs> His son's impersonating him doing Tybo classes. Yeah, exactly. But his own, like his Billy Blanks YouTube channel, he puts out, like, I think he's just putting them out once a week now. Mm-hmm. But they're, yeah. Yeah, they're, he had, like, hip t- surgery or some shit, right? Yeah, he had, like, a, I think he had reconstructive hip surgery. So and he just came back from that. So, yeah. Anyways, I just know because I, like, oh, I work out and I stumbled upon one of his videos, like, after my workout video ended. And I was like, is that Billy Blanks? <laughs> 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 and I did the is video. There- I was like, oh, yeah, keep doing it. It was like only 10 minutes long. I'm like, that's 10 minutes abs. I'll do it. And I did it. And I was like, oh, look at him go. <laughs> He's still making videos. <laughs> can I do the workout video to Jazzy Jeff mixing? Yes. <laughs> yes, you can. There you hey, go. for real people. Oh, my God. Yes. <laughs> Saturdays at 3 o'clock on Twitch, DJ Jazzy Jeff <laughs> yeah. is spinning live mm-hmm. on Twitch. And it, it's, um, I forget what, it, what he calls it now. It's like uh, two, it's about two hours long. It's like the barbecue, like the family barbecue. One of them yeah, is like, like the, the family weekend gets barbecue. Yeah, like that. It's great. It's yeah, it great. Is. So Saturdays, oh, yeah. 3 o'clock. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Man, we're just full of recommendations <laughs> in this one, right? Hindi movies, uh, Billy Blanks, Scott YouTube, Atkins. Scott Adkins, uh, DJ Jazzy <laughs> Jeff, like... It is like 1989 up in here. <laughs> <laughs> so we we picked Tough and Deadly. I had to order it on eBay. Used copy that that's a UK copy actually. So I'm gonna have to do some <laughs> Linux magic on my machine to make it is understand it, PAL DVDs. It, is it dubbed over with like British. horrible? <laughs> it's British language. <laughs> <laughs> it's got Sorry. got captions in in in, in, uh, in British slang. <laughs> I was gonna do like a really bad British accent, but I saw it myself. <laughs> Damn it! We had an opportunity there. It was a, I was it, well, I was baiting, but no one went for it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that one's coming. I'm excited because it's like. It's way off the deep end, right? Yeah. It's I mean, Roddy, Roddy Piper. Piper. And they're like, it's like one's a criminal and one's a cop and they're like team up together. Mm-hmm. So now to the real debate. 
so the, in the last movie that we were choosing, we had talked about Glimmer Man, which is Seagal and Kanan Ivory Wayans. We talked about uh, Melissa mentioned what's the one with DMX. No, that's not. That, I was going to say Cradle of the Grave. Yeah, that is that. Yeah, that yeah. Cr- 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 Cradle too, of the Grave. I think it's outside of our time, though. Yeah, yeah. that's too new. That's yeah, too that's, new. that's what we went back and forth like. No. And it's also like I, you know, I don't like, think we should do re- a DMX. Respect the DMX. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> no, it's thought about Glimmer Man, Rising Sun. Uh, which is Connery and Snipes, or I wanted to do a low down, dirty shame, which is Keenan and Ivory Wayans and Jada Pinkett, but that is a year after. That's ninety six. I- the temptation is there for Glimmer Man because of Seagal, but it just feels like Keenan Ivory Wayans. It's just a weird role for him, right? And I'm I'm anticipating it to be a wall to wall comedy. But from what I read, it's he's it's not that way. If I remember right, it's supposed to be Seagal's like the badass, and then Wayne's his wild card partner. I got um, major Last Boy Scout vibes. I was going to say, re- like, I think that's what it. it is. I think it's going to be exactly like Last Boy Scout, except just put yeah, it's Steven his dad. Seagal. <laughs> <laughs> dad, <laughs> dad. <laughs> talking about <laughs> who's dad <laughs> david wayne's that's his brother. are they brothers They're brothers. Oh. that's his older brother yeah <laughs> yeah there's uh, like Kenan's, five kids that all act yeah keenan's the oldest and uh-huh. then damon kim sean and marlon <laughs> <laughs> I even, the, the, <laughs> I even know the. I even know the way order. Of information. <laughs> I even yeah, know. I knew the there order. was a sister. I didn't know where she was, but I knew that. I knew it was. It was obviously uh, Keenan, and then Damon was younger. But let's talk about yeah. how the best one is Marlon. That's first actor. The best yeah. actor. Uh uh-uh. Sean S W one Sean. <laughs> Okay, well, <laughs> <laughs> you guys, you don't remember he was the Sean was the DJ on In Living yeah, Color. Yeah. yeah, no, I know. Yeah, yeah. And what okay. we're saying is that Marlon is the probably actor. the best part in Requiem for a Dream. So, yeah, oh, he's yes. the best actor, like as far as like serious actor, not mm-hmm. <laughs> not I'm gonna ah. get you, sucker. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so the other one. That was out there was Money Train. Yes, Carolson Money and Train. I don't know. Snipes. I feel like we need a Wesley Snipes movie because I love Wesley Snipes, but I don't know, though. Yeah, so do we do M- Money Train or Rising Sun? <laughs> Money Train is that they're best friends and they try and rob the train Yeah, so together. that's not really an unlikely duo, though, because they're best friends. Like, Well, I mean... Oh yeah, that's uh, true. They're two different, like yeah, yeah, and, and it's it's Woody. Um, well, because I think they're supposed to be like technically like one of them's like an adopted brother or something. I guess what I'm saying is that Snipes is is like the responsible one, and Woody Harrelson's like the screw up, and then they have to they try to work together to rob the train, and everything goes haywire. Like, yeah. I think it fits more than I mean, if we don't want to do Glimmer Man because it's so much like Last Boy Scout, then I mean. I think that's the better option because I don't know much about Rising Sun, but it didn't sound like that was a. The thing that I think with Money Train gives us is that it's another mainstream movie, which we have space for. That's really the only big mainstream movie we have on our list right now is Tinkle and Cash. The other thing is that it's got very different actors that have been in that haven't been in anything else that we've watched. There's Snipes, Harrelson. J-Lo, like it's it's way different in the actor department too. Okay, so but hear me out and I'm going to go off a different direction and I'm going this direction because I know that John really likes this particular person. There is a Sean Connery, Mark Harmon movie mm. called The Presidio, which is Mark Harmon is a detective and he's called in to like investigate this a military detective, obviously, Presidio. Um, he's called in to investigate a murder and he has to work with Sean Connery who is like his old I guess I don't know what is he like a general or something like his old general and they like hate each other and so there's that and Mark Harmon is like a total screw up and Sean Connery's like strict and and that's how they're like un- an unlikely duo and that's like comes up as like a but if you look up buddy cop best buddy cop movies like in the 80s and 90s that one comes up too so there's that one too but that that doesn't give us obviously that doesn't give us wesley snipes but <laughs> no i guess there were some accusations at ncis on set so I guess <gasps> oh mark, no not mark i guess i guess uncle mark is a little handsy <laughs> oh is that who they were talking about that was him that's who they were talking about with because i knew there Gritty, was all kinds of problems that, with him and that other guy that was on that bull show i was so. just reading 
that Bob Dole protested and boycotted the release of Money Train. So if Bob Dole hated it, I'm in. Oh my God. Yeah. Okay. It. Yeah. Let's watch it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Why? Why? <laughs> because there's this scene in the movie where the bulletproof glass at the MTA or whatever, the ticket yeah. counter, instead of shooting through it, they feed a tube through it, then pour like gasoline into it and light it on so fire. So thought people were going to do that? Uh huh. So he boycotted the release of the film. Oh, Bob Dole. <laughs> <laughs> Bob Dole doesn't like it. I like it. Yeah, I agree. That's the only. I think that's the only way we're gonna get Wesley Snipes in. Yes. Yeah. Go to hell, Bob Dole. <laughs> <Screw you. laughs> also, apparently, screw you, Steven Seagal, because we're not gonna do you either. No, <laughs> no you're getting skipped again. <laughs> but JCVD gets in again. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay, so I think we got our movies. Tango and Cash, Double Impact, K9, Tiger Claws, Tough and Deadly, Action Jackson, Alien Nation, Money Train. I think that's a good list. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, yeah, we got a lot of variety in there. A lot of stuff that's that's well off the beaten path. Yeah, that's good too, yeah. So I like it. Now, a little moment for me to talk about part of the reason why we had such a long pause at the end of last season. is something I haven't talked about on the podcast, but if you follow my personal stuff, you hear me talk about it a lot. So I have been a hearing aid wearer for like five years now, and I've needed them since I was like a teenager. And I finally... (laughs) Finally conceded in my 30s that I needed to start wearing them. And in the last five years, my hearing has gotten progressively worse. So it it is very, very noticeable when I have my hearing aids in and when I do not. (laughs) (laughs) No comment. (laughs) Yeah, he can't hear anything. (laughs) No, and it's come to the point now where it's like I can't watch anything on TV or on my phone or anything, unless it has captions. I just can't understand what's happening. And then I've kind of given up on music, too, because I can't... It just sounds like crazy noise. I can't discern anything from it. The only thing I can do is listen to music that I've already listened to like a thousand times. Because you know what the lyrics are already. Yeah, I already know it. I just play it in my head. So it's like music by numbers, right? Like I I know what's going to happen. So one of the things that's troubled me about the podcast about the go with the heat podcast is that it's not accessible to people who are hard of hearing or deaf. You have to be, ha- be able to hear in order to be able to listen to our show. Mm-hmm. We have no other alternative way for you to be able to consume the show. I really thought like in January, February, I really thought that it was done. Like we yeah, actually we were done, weren't yeah. going to come back and record any more episodes because there's no way for me to make it accessible. If I look at it from my perspective, I, I don't listen to the show because I talk about it. I'm the one actually in it. But if I was to listen to it, it'd be really hard for me to listen to because... yeah. I don't have it. There's no captions that go along with it. So I, after some him and haul, and I finally came to the conclusion that we can go forward with it, but I'm going to be working behind the scenes to make it accessible. And now reading subtitles at the speed at which people speak, like let's say you're totally deaf and you're just reading it. It's really slow. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's behind. You're behind on what's going on. Uh-huh. Yeah. Not, not just that, but it would be really painful on an audio show mm-hmm. that you're just reading the captions as they go. And not actually able to see anyone because then it would be, you you imagine how fast you can read and how slow (laughs) captions are. Like you would get bored really fast to just staring at the screen, waiting for things to come up. So what I'm working on is better auto generated captions for YouTube. So if you do watch it there, there'll be better captions. But what I really want is full transcript that would be on the website. So then you Mm. can just read it. You can read the entire show. And then our clips that we make for social media, those would be so the one minute clips that we put on Facebook and Twitter and stuff, they they would all be captioned. But then there would be a full transcript on the website. So for people who need it, they would be able to go and read it. But then also make the show, since I'm making it accessible for deaf and hard of hearing people, what about other people? So what about people who have attention or anxiety and they need help when getting through a very long show? So I'm going to be working on a lot of that stuff, a lot of chapters, getting chapters into the podcast, getting you know ways to be able to bookmark spots where, where you are listening. That way you could come back to it. Easier ways to get links to the stuff that we're talking about. That way, if you're lost, um, let's say English is your second language that you don't know what we're talking about, more links in the description. You can go read more about what it is that we're talking about. So, like, for example, on this show, all the references (laughs) that we've made, links to those things. That way you you can go find out what what, what they are. You know, I'm, I'm, my day job is in marketing. And so my emphasis over the last year has really, really been focused on accessibility. 
And I've grown a lot when it comes to managing brand marketing and accessibility. Anyways, I don't want to go on for a really long time about it. There's there's a lot of work that needs to get done with accessibility. And it was me in the last six months finally realizing like, hey, you know what? I'm disabled. And, dis- and saying disabled isn't a bad word. It's okay to say the word disabled. And it's okay to refer to someone as being disabled. Yeah. They are hearing disabled. That That is okay. Disabled isn't a bad word. Actually, trying to dance around the topic is more harmful. What is important to me as we get through this season is that we continue to make this more and more accessible to more and more people. And that's what the... I- the, the delay is and i completely agree and i'm gonna try to help any way i can that's just you know a behind the scenes thing too for our people that listen to the show know that that's been you know it's been weighing on me pretty heavy and how i can make this show accessible for people like me and then also more people i mean i'd love to do multi-language stuff but we're just not there yet and to be honest with you if you're listening to this you know what the biggest hold up is on this it's money it really is mm-hmm. it's money transcription mm-hmm. services cost money yeah if you're to use rev it's a dollar a minute and if our podcasts are an hour long that would mean that 60 to 90 dollars every episode it would cost them to have transcripts made i'm not trying to say that that's being ridiculous actually in the grand scheme of things that is amazingly cheap for a well, full transcript yeah, yeah the all the work that that, 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 yeah. that it takes and i've looked at ai options like otter ai and other ai options like google does and google meet they're okay just fyi auto generated captions on these services are crap and it's actually to say to someone, like, you should be happy with these auto-generated gen- subtitles. It's actually pretty offensive because those subtitles are bad. Those captions at the auto-generated ones, they are really bad. What they miss is is context. It doesn't put things in context. It doesn't say who the person is that's speaking. It's just the words as they go by. And then also, it doesn't understand the industry. So it doesn't understand acronyms or no. slang or any other things that might come along with, say, the topics that we talk about. An actor... Uh, an acronym, a type of fighting style. It wouldn't understand a word like Jim Cotta. <laughs> <laughs> well, that is a travesty in itself. <laughs> yeah, I mean, come on. That's like in the dictionary and everything. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, um, if you'd love to give us money, we'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be used for making the show accessible. So that's, that's all I wanted to do. Yep. That's all I wanted to say or, on that. Or if you would like to write transcripts for us for free, <laughs> we would also be interested in that. <laughs> Jot down whatever you can. Send it to us. <laughs> if you're interested in supporting us, Patreon, Square Cash, Venmo, like whatever it is, any money that we're raising is going towards accessibility stuff. So these transcriptions, any other tools that we need to be able to make things as accessible as possible. FYI, if we could raise like a hundred dollars an episode, that would cover all the costs that we would need for it. Uh, so this is, you know, that's the end of our like kind of planning. We have planned for you should watch it, and John explains that'll be in this season, but we're not going to tip our hands. <laughs> <laughs> But we're not going to tap our hands on what those movies are going to be. I mean, Tupac might make an appearance in those. Maybe. Yeah, maybe. maybe. He might. He, he <laughs> might. We might have to talk about that. Because I, I had another idea, too. John talked about more Mythica movies? Who knows what's coming? In yeah. those, in, in the other than John explains in the you, you Should Watch It. Episodes will be coming soon. We haven't decided on a first movie, so it'll be a surprise when that episode comes out surprise. what what the first movie is that that we chose to start this season. Uh, that's been this is our official planning. This you're not getting a, a planned meeting. This is us literally talking of doing all of our back end planning. This is it right so. here. <laughs> this is all of it. This is how we plan. All right, pals, keep the show subscribe. In two weeks, the first episode of this season will be out. That's all for us this week. See you next time. Bye, pals.